Okay, so I get lots of questions about how you center a decal on a cornhole board. Pretty simple process here, and I know this is, this is going to be um, probably the most archaic way to do it. Um, there are easier ways to do it with simply just cutting the vinyl, a complete sheet, 24 by 48 to fit your whole board so there's no guessing, it just goes straight down. I like to separate my decals um, just because it makes it easier. Sometimes my cutter gets a little sideways, it's not perfect, so I separate them. So what I do here to start out is I measure the halfway point from top to bottom, which is about 10.8 on this one, right about, right about here. Um, and that's not always exact, it just depends on the decal because some decals, they have to be exactly straight. This one is a little offset. So it makes a difference, but doesn't make all the difference. And so the same thing this way, from here, find the center line. I use my trusty little calculator sometimes. Looks like we're at about 22.75. So 22.75 divided by two. Here we're at 11.3 and some change. So right about here. All right, so I've got the center line here and I've got the center line down the middle of the decal, right? So top to bottom, left to right. Typically, if I can get the, if I can get this um, to reach all the way across, I'll use this. And I leave a little excess of the paper underneath the decal just so that I can use the, um, and I can use this Sharpie to go all the way through and then some so that I can see. And typically I'll put some transfer paper out past the decal so that it makes it a lot easier. So from here, I'm going to take this, I'm actually gonna line it up with the top of the decal because when I cut the decal, I actually put an auto weed square around it so I know it's perfectly square around the uh, graphic, whatever that is. So I'm gonna get here. I've got my line up here where I know it's straight or somewhat straight. From here, I'll draw, draw a long line all the way down, right straight through the middle. I'll come up here and I typically extend it up onto the transfer paper here. Same thing on this side. I'm going to line it up with the edge that I know is straight right here, all the way down that auto weed box. I'm going to line it up so that I know it's perfectly straight from right to left. I'm gonna draw that line. And what I've done is I've created my center line. And out here, I usually extend it by hand. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. So that's how I find the center of the decal with the transfer paper on. I'm gonna show you how this makes a difference when you're actually putting it on the board here in a second. Okay, first things first. Now, this board already has stain on it. I've let it dry overnight because that's gonna be the background. First things first, I'm gonna find the center of my board, uh, left to right. It's almost always gonna be 12. If I do all of my cuts correctly, it's almost always gonna be 12. I'm typically confident that it's always 12. So, I make a little mark here. Uh, remember to erase your pencil marks. I've done it before where I've got polyurethane on there and I forgot, to, I forgot to erase my pencil marks. It's a bummer, but with this background, you won't see it. You're the only one that's gonna see that, but remember to erase it. So, now I've got my center line here. I've got my T-square. Again, this is very archaic, this is old fashioned, but it's foolproof 100% of the time. So, now I've got my center line. So, this decal, I don't need to span the entire board because the decal is not gonna span the entire board. So I kind of guesstimate that I'm gonna put it right about here somewhere, right? So I don't need to draw a solid pencil line all the way through. I just need to make a light pencil line here and probably here, right? So I can barely see it on either side, but I know it's there and I'm gonna use it. So now I have to determine at what height or what what part of the board I want this decal to lie. A lot of this depends on whether you have another decal here on the top. So this one, let's see if I can get this right. It happens to be like this, 
right? So I don't want to jam it all the way up here because I'm going to overlap. So I'm going to pick kind of an arbitrary distance from the bottom, excuse me, the bottom of the board down here and this part of the board here. So this line, this horizontal line across, I'm going to pick, let's say, let's call it, and I always pick an even number. I always go about 16, right? So now I'm going to take everything off, get my trusty, get my trusty, trusty measurement going here. And I'm at about 16 here. And I can take the T square yet again. And yet again, I'm not going to go all the way across because it's unnecessary. I'm just going to come out a little bit here and a little bit here. So I'll show you why I made those pencil marks here. All right, so you probably already guessed why I put the center line here and here. It's because I'm going to line up these lines that I already made on the back of the transfer paper and the decal. When I take the transfer paper and the decal off, it'll make it super easy for me to just line up this one, line up the middle one, right? I can drop this here. I know it's straight in the middle. I know it's straight based on this line, kind of the horizon line here, all the way across, left to right. And then I know exactly that my decal is dropped down perfectly. I don't have to think about it. Um, again, it's old school, but it works every single time because I know that this is a straight line, this is a straight line. Because I did it with the T-square, it's perfect every single time. Plus, this actual graphic here, um, it can be tilted a little bit and no one would really know. So if it's off by like a centimeter or a millimeter, not gonna make a big deal. So here we go. Let's put it down. Okay, so uh, now we're ready to line up the decal. I took the decal off the backing. Got the transfer paper on the front. We gotta make sure that it is the right way, obviously. Now, from here, I try to take it and kind of fold it down the middle a little bit. I don't wanna crinkle it, but I wanna fold it down the middle. I typically try to find my height first over here, and then I'm lining it up with that center line. You can barely see it, but I'm right there. And then I'm gonna come back over here and try to do the same thing. So now this part, if you don't push down, if you don't push the decal down, it's not gonna stick, right? So you can kind of manipulate it from here a little bit just to make sure that you're straight. I'm hypersensitive about being super straight. Right there, right there, okay. Now, I always take a look around. I always come out here, make sure it's pretty square, step back from it, do the same thing, kind of look both sides, make sure that we're squared away. And then once I'm confident that I hit the marks here and here, and then under there, yep, right on top of it, down here as well. I'm gonna be a little crooked down here. So I can kind of adjust just a little tad bit. All right, so there we go. Good to go. All right, then of course I'm going to take my little spudger here and get all of the bubbles out. This part's really important with the little tiny pieces. So right here, because when you pull the transfer paper off, these little tiny pieces tend to want to pull up. Um, and I'll show you the best way to pull up the transfer paper so that you're not pulling up those little pieces. There's sort of a good angle and best practice of that that I've found in my personal opinion. And I've done a lot of these, so I'm qualified to give that opinion. Okay, removing the transfer paper. This is sort of a tricky part, depending on what type of transfer paper you have. Um, I tend to buy the kind of inexpensive stuff because I use so much of it and I literally just throw it away. 
right at, right after I use it. So I get it on Amazon, pretty cheap. But I get it in massive rolls so I don't run out halfway through. Furthermore, I'm going to take the transfer paper and I'm gonna to try to keep it as tight as I possibly can um, so that this angle isn't pulling up in, in this way because all that does is pull up the decal, right? So I'm gonna to try to keep it tight so that it puts leverage on this little point right here so that it can just leave the decal, pull the transfer paper off. And you can see we're coming up on a tough spot right here. You usually take two hands, go slow. Sometimes you have to go at an angle depending on what the angle of this kind of uh, decal is. So we're coming up into an edge right here and I guarantee you some of it will come up. And the best practice is to just go really slow, push down on that edge and you can continue on your way. All right, so we're coming to this little guy right here. So I'm gonna make sure, again, you don't want it to roll up like this because then that makes the angle go up instead of creating this leverage point right here to where it's just pulling this way instead of up. There we go, success. Now I'm noticing over here that I forgot to weed a couple spots. I, that tends to happen under these lights right here. So I'll go ahead and take those out. And going slow, going slow, going slow. And so if you notice what I'm doing, I've just got two hands completely flat. And I'm pulling, pulling slow. And I forgot to weed this whole section right here, but that's okay. So now what I start to see happening is starting to roll up over here. So you're gonna wanna stop, pull this out flat, because again, we want it to be completely flat when it's coming off the vinyl on the, on the deck. So <clears throat> here we go, here we go. Coming up to these little spots right here little pull up right here just push it down little one right here I like to push on the back of the transfer tape I'm actually glad that happened so you can stick it back on there It'll start to roll sometimes when you use the spudger at the beginning you don't get these little spots and so they've never been pressed down so that's why they're gonna come up all right and now we're to the end there's no more graphic there, so I can get a little bit more aggressive. Be careful, though, that you don't rip too hard. You don't want to pull out these grains up here. So continue to be slow. You can get some tear out on those grains along the side. So there we go. And I saved this because I'm going to paint later, so I'm going to use this as a mask. Remember, again, we're trying to save tape. All right, so now that we have the vinyl laid down, we can start to mask off the board for paint. This board's going to get some paint. So the easiest thing to do is to take the transfer paper you just used and mask off certain portions of the board. Um, it's cheap. This is cheap. If anything is touching the board, I recommend frog tape. This cheap paint or this cheap tape is recommended for anything that's not touching the board because it might pull up some of that grain. But I'm going to cover all this with the stuff that I just ripped apart off the vinyl. Makes a perfect mask that you're just going to take off a few minutes later. So, so it's not pretty at all, but we used all recycled materials except for a little bit of frog tape here and there, which is touching the board. So I don't love to put the orange tape and or the transfer paper back on there, but here's how we look. So when I spray, it's only going to spray where I want it to spray. Okay, so um, I sprayed three light coats of the Rust-Oleum. This is great spray paint. If you need spray paint, it's better than the Lowe's brand, the Krylon. Um, did three light coats, about a minute apart. And now I'm ready to immediately, immediately take off the vinyl um, and all the tape and everything because there is a point at about 15 minutes where you can still take off the vinyl and the paint will, will be not dry enough, so it'll be still wet to where you can scratch out 
scratch off little bleeds through the vinyl. So three coats, 15 minutes, bam, take it off right away. You can always touch up, especially with white. White is an easy color to touch up if you really need to, but in my experience, um, has never been a problem. So I'm going to take all this off and we'll see how it looks.